What's up everyone, me JP2 here. In today's video we have level 50 Hisuian Decidui in the Open Master League. Now, this cost 500,000 Stardust, so I really hope you guys like it. And also, this thing, I did have to do a few remote raids to actually get a good IV one. And this was the best one I got. I unfortunately did not get a hundo, but 15, 15, 14 is close enough in my opinion, so I'm fine with it. Now this thing, it has some respectable bulk to it. Like it's not like extremely glassy like Greninja or Houndoom was. So it isn't terrible, frankly. And it also has some pretty good moves. It has Psycho Cut, which means it gets to the moves pretty fast. Or Sphere is just a pretty good move. And Energy Ball is nice against like Kyogre and Groudon. So it does have pretty good coverage. Now that's gonna be pretty much it. Let's get into the battles. Alright, so into the first battle, we lead into a Togekiss Mirror. Thankfully, mine is a shiny and shinies do more damage, so I am going to be winning this matchup. So the opponent does switch out into Melmetal, and now we can send in Decidueye. Now the thing about this is that Decidueye walls pretty much all the moves that Melmetal runs except Super Power, or Double Iron Bash, but Double Iron Bash is pretty uncommon. So they go for a Thunderbolt, and they have to land a Super Power to do any real meaningful damage and they're just going straight Thunderbolt. Now, one Aura Sphere won't take out Melmetal, but Aura Sphere does a lot of damage. Now, the opponent is going to go for a move here, and I feel like they were double baiting, and I actually do correctly shield the superpower, and then they send in their Togekiss. Now, Togekiss is just going to get just hard-walled by Melmetal. I say this as I get hit by a super effective move, but Flamethrower won't take us out, so it doesn't matter. We're able to take him out with a Rock Slide, and the opponent sends in Kyogre. Now, Kyogre is going to have to eat a couple charge moves, and I will be going for a superpower here because if I debuff my defense, this waterfall might KO, and we get a shield, and it KOs. The opponent gets a farm down, but they were not expecting Decidueye to be so close to a move. They lose all that energy, and they send in Melmetal, but this game is over. They can go for a move here, and they go for a superpower, but I shield it, and I'm going to go for an energy ball. Energy Ball will take out the Melmetal. Looks like the opponent forced with the app, but we're able to take him out, and we're able to take that game. We lead Togekiss into Garchomp in the next battle. Dominant lead, and the opponent sends in Ho-Oh. Now, Ho-Oh is a bit of an uncomfortable matchup for Melmetal because of the Incinerate damage buff, but thankfully, Rock Slides are going to do a lot of damage, and while we do need two to take him out, we hopefully can. Now, the opponent goes for a Brave Bird bait, but the thing about that is now Rock Slide will KO. So that actually works out fine. The opponent goes for another move here, but I'm comfortable committing my second shield as well because I do not want to see Decidueye get wrecked by a Ho-Oh. So we're going to be able to go for a uh, Rock Slide. Melmetal takes out the Ho-Oh, and now uh, the opponent sends in the Garchomp. Now I can debuff myself here with the Superpower, and that hopefully means I get less farm, even if it doesn't really matter into Togekiss. We send in Togekiss, and the opponent comes in with a Lugia. And I kind of have to stay in here because, well, the Decidueye kind of gets one shot by Sky Attack, so it's a bit of a problem. Now the opponent's going to go for an Aero Blast. Thankfully, Togekiss tanks it. Not very well, but tanks it. And we will be able to make it another Ancient Power. The Garchomp also has to throw a move to get rid of us. They can't really Dragon Tail down very easily. So I'm just going to send in Decidueye. I was hoping to catch a Sand Tomb or something, but they didn't go for it. The opponent goes for an Earthquake of all things, so it looks like someone did not get the Community Day move, but Aura Sphere does enough damage that even if they get a farm down, we're going to be able to go for one Charm, and as long as this isn't a bigger move, we'll tank it. And Sand Tomb doesn't take us out, and we take that game. It also does show just how little damage uh, Decidueye can output with Psycho Cut, so you do want to be wary of that if you ever decide to power this thing up, it just can't really farm anything down. We see Landorus next lead, and Togekiss does tank one Stone Edge, but after they land a Sandseer Storm, now we're actually in Stone Edge range, which means that I will have to respect it. So I will be going for a shield here, and the opponent baits again, which is not ideal, but doesn't matter too much to me, because I'm perfectly fine with conceding Switch, but they actually bait for a third time. So I really don't know what they were thinking, but now they just get farmed down. They send in Mewtwo, and I'm three stages debuffed, so I'm going to save the energy, and I'm going to send in Melmetal. I catch the side strike as well, which is pretty cool. 
the opponent is actually staying in here, which is pretty nice because this is a pretty solid matchup for Mel Battle. We land uh, Rock Slide and they're going to be going for a move here. I'm not going to shield because if they're going for a Shadow Ball, we probably still tank that and make it to a Rock Slide. And I'll be able to go for another Rock Slide. The opponent shields though. And that is something that has me kind of thinking whatever they have in the back is not going to like Mel Metal. So I send in Togekiss and I was wondering what they could have in the back that didn't want to see Mel Metal. And in the back, it's a Gyarados. Now I'm going to send in Decidueye and the opponent just concedes the match there. I don't know if that game was exactly over, but they couldn't really farm down and both their charge moved for Wald, so I guess I see why they conceded that match. We see Mewtwo on the lead of the next battle, and Psystrike does some nice damage into Togekiss, and they will be able to outpace to another one. But I can shield, and if I go for an Ancient Power, I can probably get that shield back, and it puts the Mewtwo into farm down range for Melmetal, which is perfect. We get the shield with the Ancient Power, and I actually just decide to catch on a Melmetal, and I get the Thundershock through, which is nice. The opponent sends in Garchomp, and kind of glad to have switched out into Melmetal, because despite being a grass type into a ground type, the Sijuai still doesn't enjoy seeing Garchomp. So I can go for the back to back superpowers, get the Garchomp into the yellow, and they're still gonna probably need an earth power to take us out, because Sandtomb would not do the job. We can send in Togekiss now, and I am gonna be no shielding here, because I do think that they'd be able to get taken out by one more energy ball, which is the thing I really care about. And I decided no shield here, I was thinking another earth power. But they're running Outrage, and they send in Metagross, and we were, we were really not going to be able to win that anyways, considering they had Metagross, so I can see that, yeah, that game. We see Zacian on the lead in the next battle, and this is not a terrible lead, but if they can get to back-to-back -back Wild Charges, they can usually just force one shield, because I will lose CMP, so I just decided to catch the second Wild Charge. Now, this Wild Charge is resisted, it won't do too much, and the opponent sends in Togekiss. It's not good for Decidueye, but the thing about running an uncommon Pokemon like this is people don't know what it runs. So I'm actually able to pull a shield with the Energy Ball, which is pretty nice. Now they do have a lot of farm here, so I actually will be able to just commit a shield because I'm worried about a flamethrower. And two Rock Slides will take them out from this range. So I can go for the first one. This Rock Slide will get them pretty low, and I'm going to be able to go for another one. I do decide to try and undercharge it, but I still charged it enough to knock him out, which is unfortunate. Now they send in Excadrill, and Excadrill is not good. I can go for a superpower to get the shield though, and I'm gonna go for an Aura Sphere. I wait the turn there just to make sure that they don't actually catch. They don't, and the Aura Sphere does a ton of damage, and I still don't think Melmetal has a fun time farming down the Excadrill, so I do end up actually shielding. Also because Zacian never farms down Togekiss, so they have to go for a move to take me out. Wild Charge takes me out, but Melmetal is able to make it to the Superpower. Superpower will just take out the Zacian from this range. And as you can see, the opponent's forced with the app. We get the farm down with, sorry, but we get the Superpower to go through and take him out, and we're able to take the game. Terrible lead in the next battle, Togekiss into Solgaleo. And Solgaleo just beats my whole team. So this game, it's already basically looking like a loss. The only thing I can hope to really do is stay in with Togekiss and just hope that they don't shield the move. Now, Psychic Fangs will nearly take out Togekiss, but hopefully I can land an Aura Sphere, and I actually do. So this game isn't looking completely over yet. If they're running Flamethrower, I might as well concede, but if they're not, then Melmetal can probably make it to a Rock Slide, and Rock Slide can take him out. It does look like since they are able to go for the Psychic Fangs, they should be out of energy, which means I can just get a full farm down. And I probably will have to switch out afterwards, though, because my defense is double debuffed. I will be going for a superpower, though, just because I can, because the debuffs will be cleared anyways. Then I send in Decidueye. Decidueye does not like seeing Metagross, though. But on the bright side, we do have a very slight pacing advantage, and Aura Sphere will be more, uh, more menacing because of the fact we got some damage off. The opponent then sends in Shadow Gyarados. And suddenly this game actually doesn't look terrible anymore. Because they do have to go for a move to take out Sijuai because I don't think they get a Dragon Breath farm down here. Aqua Tail barely doesn't take us out, but I can send in Melmetal. And I'm going to be able to just commit a shield on this Aqua Tail and go for one Rock Slide. And I should be able to farm up like a couple extra Thunder Shocks, but that Rock Slide did more damage than I had expected. And we get a full farm down. 
And now I just have to make it to enough moves to be able to take out this Metagross. And it all comes down to this superpower. Does the superpower take out the Metal Metal? And it does. And we're barely able to take that match despite the awful lead. We see a Garchomp in the next battle. Opponent immediately sends in Kyogre. And we can send in Decidueye. Now, while it would be nice to be running Magical Leaf on Decidueye, I found Psycho Cut's pacing to be nice. And Energy Ball will do a ton of damage, but we still never farm down. The opponent goes for a Thunder. Thunder does some pretty nice damage. This is where I am kind of sad I'm not running Aerial Ace, because Aerial Ace would be a nice move because it would be a nice way to take him out quickly. But as you can see, because of the uh, just not optimal pacing, because both Energy and Aura Sphere are expensive, the opponent's actually able to just get a full farm down by, by committing two shields. They are leaving their team vulnerable to a Charmer with two shields, and it looks like they realize that, and they concede the match. See ho oh in the next battle, and I can't really switch out here because if I send in Melmetal and they switch out, I'm just not in a good position. Thing is, the opponent farms up to 100 energy, and that means I make it to an Ancient Power before they throw. They actually go one incinerate over 100, so it looks like that might have been an accidental overtap, and they throw a Brave Bird. Now, the Charms did get them into Rock Slide range anyways, so throwing that Brave Bird is not important like in this matchup. They go for a Sacred Fire, and they don't even get the debuff, which is nice. Now, I will be able to go for a Rock Slide. Rock Slide should be taking them out, but they shield. But I'm actually going to be able to outpace them by a singular turn, which means that I'm able to deny the energy, and I'm able to be up a shield. The opponent then sends in Lugia. That is not a Mel Metal answer. The opponent then catches onto Reshiram, though, which does mean that they're still going to get hit for super effective. But I can send in my Decidueye, and assuming the Reshiram didn't get a Dragon Breath through, which it looks like they didn't, I will be able to go for an Aura Sphere before they make it to a move. They're going to be going for a uh, Fusion Flare here. Fusion Flare will take out my Decidueye, but now I can send in Mel Metal, and I get a perfect farm down. Thing is, Lugia has a ton of HP, and Lugia just kind of bulky, so I'm going to need to make it to two more Rock Slides to be able to take out this Lugia. So I'm going to be able to make it to another one, but I need to go for another Rock Slide before they make it to another Sky Attack. So it looks like we will be able to barely outpace them because they were dry on energy. So if they had two more turns, I think they would have won, but they don't, so we're able to take that game. We lead Togekiss into Landris in the next battle. And Situai is a wall to Landorus's energy, which is, I think, quite funny because the flying type is getting walled by the type that's double weak to flying. The opponent, this time they go straight Stone Edge, and as shown, Togekiss does tank it. Now, I will be able to go for an Ancient Power, and I actually grab a boost here, which is quite funny as it does nothing, except the fact that we actually do tank that move, so I can send in Decidueye and get a farm down. And that's pretty nice. The opponent then sends in Zacian. And this isn't good like a fairy type into a fighting type, but being up a shield does mean that Decidueye does have some play. Now they're going for a move, I'm shielding, and it is a play rough. And I actually can probably go for an energy ball here and probably get a shield. The opponent does shield it, and now the opponent is going to go for a move, but I can shield, and the Psycho Cut damage has probably got them into energy ball range. The opponent tries to catch on to Dialga though, and honestly, I can just go for one Aura Sphere, farm up to an Energy Ball, and then just switch into Melmetal. Dialga can't really do anything into Melmetal, and the Zacian has to throw a move to take out Melmetal. And by doing so, they debuff themselves. Now, I'll be able to farm up a ton, go for a Rock Slide. And the Zacian, they will have to go for a move to take out Melmetal still. So I can go for the Rock Slide. This just guarantees that Energy Ball will take him out. And it also means that they cannot farm up enough to make it to back-to-back -back moves, because I'll make it to a rock slide before they make it to enough moves to take out the Decidueye. So I can go for the Energy Ball. Energy Ball will take out the Decidueye, sorry, will take out the Zacian, and we're able to take that game. In the next battle, we lead Togekiss into Zerud. Dominant lead, but the thing is, if the opponent switches out, they can send in Mewtwo, but I don't really care too much about Switch here. So if the opponent really wants to fight for Switch, they can give up both shields. But the thing is, Zerud has really nowhere to go into this team, so I don't really care about conceding switch. I do actually decide to shield though, because I really didn't want to get focus blasted, because I do not want to get hit by a focus blast, because that still would kind of hurt. So I do decide to just shield in the end. The opponent is happy to take their shield advantage, and then they send back in the Zerud. 
I'm going for one superpower, and I'm going to switch out because I still have two good responses, so I feel I might as well. The opponent sends in Metagross, and I'm pretty happy to have been able to get this to come out. And the opponent does throw a move here, and that was the goal. I was trying to get them to throw energy, and now I can send in Melmetal, and Melmetal should be able to throw quite a few rock slides into this Metagross. And the opponent no shields the first one, but they're going to have to start shielding because these rock slides will get them low enough eventually, and the opponent is probably going to still have to shield this. If I go for a superpower, it takes them out, but it did get me kind of nervous, so I do actually commit the commit to going for a rock slide instead of debuffing myself. The opponent tries to snipe with his root, but we can send in Decidueye. The thing is, they will get a farm down on the Metagross, and that is very bad for my Mel Metal, because they'll be able to make it to a move, so I have to farm up to a ton of energy on my Decidueye, and I'd have to perfectly undercharge this to probably win this game, but I can go for an energy ball here, but I just have too much left over HP. They're going to be able to get a full farm down and leave with a move, and Mel Metal, even if it had a move, would lose charge attack priority. So we do lose that game, despite the amazing lead. We lead Togekiss into Lugia in the next battle, and this is a very good lead because Dragon Tail's resisted. The opponent sends in Swampert, and this is the worst possible matchup for Swampert to see, basically. They can go for an Earthquake, doesn't even do half, and I can go for an Energy Ball. This opponent probably is not going to be committing a shield because it's a terrible matchup, and they don't. Swampert gets one shot, and they set back in Lugia. Now Lugia is going to be able to resist anything this thing throws. We actually get a debuff from the energy ball. And that's very nice because debuffing Lugia's most important attribute is very nice. I go for another energy ball. No debuff that time, but it's fine. I'm going to send in Melmetal. And Melmetal is going to be able to tank an Aeroblast. The opponent then sends in Excadrill. And this is not looking good. I'm going to be able to go for a superpower to grab a shield. Then I have to send in Togekiss to clear the debuff. Now the opponent is going to go for a move, and I have to no-shield this, but I will have to shield the second one, because I do need to try and make it to another move, because I need to go for an Aura Sphere or an Ancient Power to try and get a shield. So it all comes down to whether the opponent knows their counts. They don't know their counts, though, and it looks like that might be game over for them. But the problem is that even if they're going to be able to take me out, I still have to go for a superpower to take out the Excadrill, which does mean I get debuffed into the Lugia matchup. The opponent farms up and then switches out, and that's kind of a lose con, because I can go for a Rock Slide. I'll be able to tank the Sky Attack, I'll be able to make it to back-to-back -to -back moves, and I'll be able to just take out the Lugia. The Excadrill is one mud shot off, so they're not going to have a move. I'll be able to go for the superpower, Superpower will take them out from this range, and we're able to take that game because of the opponent's slight misplay. Dominant lead in the next battle, Togekiss into Dragonite. Opponent sends in Landorus, and I really don't care about Switch here, so I'm not going to be shielding. It's not like they have anything to do any damage anyways, but if the opponent wants to fight for Switch, they can. Now I'm going for an Energy Ball. Energy Ball actually grabs the shield, and they're just going to be able to go for another Sand Seer Storm. Another Sandseer Storm with the added Mudshot damage might take me out, but I will be able to make it to another Energy Ball before that, at least. And this Energy Ball will do some okay damage. Sandseer Storm probably will take me out of this range, but like I said, I really don't care about Switch, because I still have two strong Dragonite answers, as long as there's shields in play in the Metal's case, but the opponent shouldn't have a Stone Edge here. They actually do, though, so I did miscount. And then they send in Ho-Oh. Now, this is... Kind of just looking like a Mel Metal cleans up the game, basically, because Rock Slide will do some amazing damage into Ho-Oh, and the opponent is over farming. Now, Rock Slide won't one shot, but that does a ton of damage. The opponent then sends in Dragonite, so they try to just bank all that energy so they can try and force a shield with the Dragonite, but they make one critical mistake here. Dragonite can just farm down, but I have two shields, and Togekiss has energy. I'll be able to leave with an Ancient Power, and I have a Shield, so even if Ho-Oh has a move, we can lose CMP, but we'll still get the move. They realize that, they go for the Incinerate, but we have the Ancient Power, and we take him out, and we're able to take that game. We see another Swamper in, lead this, in this game, and this is a pretty good lead for Togekiss, simply because the Togekiss has a pretty high stat product total compared to Swampert's, and we should be able to barely tank three Hydro Cannons. Now they throw on good timing here, 
and they're going to be going for another Hydro Cannon. And I should be able to throw right before they make it to another one. And at this range, Ancient Power should be enough to KO. The opponent lets it go, and it actually does take him out, which is perfect. They then send in Groudon, and Groudon can take out Togekiss with a Fire Punch, but I can send in Decidueye, and Decidueye will take Super Effective from Fire Punch. We should be able to barely take two. Now the opponent is going to get outpaced to an Energy Ball, and the thing is, I can't, I can't let Decidueye go down because Melmetal will just straight up lose to Groudon, so I do have to start shielding. Then this is where having a pacing disadvantage is not ideal. The opponent sends in Hydreigon, and the Hydreigon's running Bite. Now this would be nice for Hisuian Decidueye because Hisuian Decidueye would resist it, but Melmetal would have preferred Dragon Breath because that's resisted, and Dragon Breath is just better than Bite for most of the time because Bite is able to hit Psychic for super effective, so it does make Hydreigon kind of a counter to Mewtwo, but it kind of already was, so it doesn't help it too much. Now I'm going for another Rock Sound of this Hydreigon, and I'm hoping that the Groudon gets one Mud Shot, but they get two, and that might be game ending because they are might be able to just win CMP now. And the opponent is going to go for a move here. And if they win CMP, then that does mean that um, getting one extra mud shot will in this game. But it looks like they had more energy than I thought. So they're just going to be able to go for a fire punch and take me out. And they're able to take that game. Overall, the thing didn't perform as poorly as I thought it would have. And it did pretty good. Now, while I still would not recommend building something like this, I was able to have some fun with it. And maybe it'll be useful in the Master Premier Cup. Who knows? It does have a pretty strong matchup into Gyarados. So something like that in the Master Premier, if they ever bring it back, that is, might actually be fun. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Anyways, that's pretty much it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.